Hey, welcome to the Rugged Truth Podcast. I'm Dr. Brian Fergus, and I am so glad that you have joined us for this episode of The Rugged Truth. I'm coming to you this week from my new studio in central Illinois. I call it Brian's Bible Bunker. It's in a designated room in the basement of my new home in Illinois. Recently, my wife Stacy and I moved from Phoenix to get closer to family and, and so that we could get more focused with our lives. And, and I am now a full-time online professor of biblical studies and theology. I stepped out of vocational ministry uh, so that I could really, you know, laser focus my time on training up the next generation of Christian pastors, ministry leaders, and faithful Jesus followers. I guess when you get on the backside of 40, you start thinking about the next generation and, and who's going to carry the torch, so to speak, once you have to put it down for the final time. Uh, my focus is really on helping the next generation of Christian pastors and ministry leaders be selfless servants of Christ and his church. I want them to serve Jesus in a healthy way. So uh, I'm focusing all of my time on that endeavor. I'm you know, recording some online content. I'm teaching online courses. I'm writing. Look for a new book coming out hopefully soon if the schedule cooperates. Why the focus? I've been asked that question by my friends. Why, why is such a laser focus on training up the next generation now? It's it comes from a keen awareness of this. The church in America is in a crisis right now. It's at a tipping point, uh, if you will. Uh, and it's in crisis in ways that we'll address in today's uh, episode of the Rugged Truth Podcast and in future episodes of the Rugged Truth Podcast. And, and I realize that when I say the church in America is in crisis right now. Some of you are probably thinking, no, it's not. You know, my church looks fine. Everything's fine. No, it's not. Um, but yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Well, let me just give you a, a, just some anecdotal. Well, actually, no, this is some hard data. Uh, for starters, we're declining in numbers. Christians uh, attending church in America are declining in, in record numbers quickly. Um, the Southern Baptist Convention a few months ago announced that membership in their denomination, and understand, the Southern Baptist Convention is the largest evangelical denomination in the world, okay? But they just announced that their membership declined by 1.1 million members in the last three years. Those are hard numbers. People leaving the Southern Baptist Convention. You could say, well, they're going to other churches. The numbers don't, don't uh, show that that is, is the case. Uh, anyone who tells you that the church in America is not in crisis right now uh, is uh, gaslighting you. We're in serious decline. And as I've mentioned, the data, the facts prove that this is the case. According to the Pew Research Center, which is a reputable uh, group of researchers, 63% uh, of Americans today self-identify as Christians. Now you might think, hey, that's over half the country. That's great. But, but check this out. That's down from 75% in 2011. That's a downward trend. And I guess just anecdotally, not beyond the, the hard numbers that I've shared with you, uh, because I am in the, the arena of Christian higher education, it, it seems like uh, about uh, almost every week I hear of a, a flagship uh, seminary or a uh, Bible college experiencing extreme financial difficulty or even closing its doors. So that means that not only are the numbers of our churches declining, that also means that fewer and fewer people are being trained for vocational ministry. Now you might think, yeah, but there are going to be fewer churches, and so we need uh, uh, fewer leaders. But you, you see the problem of all of that. It's all hard evidence of numerical decline and not just numerical decline. We'll talk about uh, reputational decline here in just a moment. 
the data shows that the younger generations of Americans aren't going to church anymore. And by younger, let me put that in perspective. I mean 40 and below, okay? And you might be thinking 40 is not young. Well, I'm in my mid-50s. It seems young to me. But the younger generations of America are not going to church anymore. They're stopping their church attendance. And so what I want to do uh, in our time together uh, that we have left is is just to, to talk about uh, a, a, maybe a controversial question, maybe one that might strike you a, as a little bit harsh, but uh, I want to get your attention on this because it's serious. And so here's the question that we're going to answer. We're going to talk about two reasons why your kids don't go to church anymore. Two reasons why your ch- kids don't go to church anymore. We're going to address why the church is in such decline. And this isn't an, ex- an, an exhaustive list. It's just two of the reasons. We'll look at other reasons in upcoming podcasts. We won't get depressed about it, but we will get realistic about it because Jesus wants us to be on task when it comes to sharing the gospel truth with the people in our lives. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about two reasons why your kids don't go to church anymore. The first one is this, relevance. Relevance. Younger generations of Americans do not find church to be relevant to their lives at all anymore. In other words, what happens On Sunday mornings or Saturday nights or Wednesday evenings, whenever your church meets, what happens in your church doesn't seem to matter to them. It doesn't seem to have an impact on the way they live their lives. And and I know that some older generations of Christians hear that and they think, well, so what? Who cares if they don't think that what we do is relevant? We're not trying to be relevant. We're trying to focus on the truth. And listen, I get it. I hear you loud and clear, and I would agree with you to a certain extent. I would say, amen, we don't change the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ for anybody. We don't tickle people's ears. We don't try to, uh, you know, dumb down the message for anybody. We, we, We don't do that at all. But I would also add this. I would say, of course, we don't change the message but we can change our method. See, there's a difference. The method is not the message. The message is that Jesus came to live and die for us so that we could have an eternal connection to him in heaven forever and ever. (laughs) Amen. That's the message. Our method needs to change. If what we're seeing in uh, the decline of uh, attendance in church is, is an actual thing, and it is, our method needs to change. In other words, uh, we need to move away from irrelevance to relevance, right? We need to get real and engage with the younger generations of believers who are struggling to find a place in church. Uh, We started the Rugged Truth podcast months ago to answer real questions, real people are asking about real life with Jesus. And at times I've been kind of playing it safe with these podcasts. I'm not going to do that anymore. It's too urgent. What we're talking about here is too important to just kind of soft sell ideas and to be gentle. I'm going to be a man of grace, but I'm also going to be a man of bold truth in these episodes. And I'm going to tell you this, that one of the problems of uh, that's resulting in the decline of church attendance among younger generations of America is just this idea that they don't think that that our faith and our faith practice is relevant to their lives at all. And that's because of this. Many younger Americans aren't getting their questions answered when they show up at the doors of a church. Studies show that Americans perceive the church to be unwilling, just unwilling, to face the honest, hard questions that are before us in our culture right now. 
And so they think, well, if the church isn't going to answer my questions, then church is not for me. The crazy thing is, you and I as Christians have been mandated to be prepared to engage in these kinds of conversations with people, whether they're young believers or young non-believers. I've got my Bible here, and um, I'm going to read a familiar verse of Scripture for you. Um, it's 1 Peter 3.15, where we get this mandate to be willing to engage. Peter, the apostle, writes, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Right? Always be prepared to answer people, to give them the reason for the hope that you have. And you and. I think Peter has first and foremost in the front of his mind, you know, the fact that we are saved by grace through faith. That's our reason for hope. But we also need to be willing to engage in conversations with people about our faith in a way that addresses their questions, not just our talking points. And that's where we go more often than not. We want to make sure we get our talking points in rather than listen and answer real questions. I have said this before, and I know I'm going to offend some people when I say it, and I don't apologize for this, but I got to tell you something. Too many preachers spend too much time on Sunday morning answering questions no one is asking. And that is the truth. I'm going to say it again. Too many preachers, Christian pastors, spend too much time on Sunday mornings answering questions no one is asking. I'm in contact with a lot of people through the Rugged Truth podcast, but also students, and I've been contacted by some of my uh, Arizona students recently who are just flabbergasted by what's going on in their church. Their, their pastor is preaching messages from one of the historical books of the Bible, and he's turning his messages just into history lessons with no relevance for their lives. These are, these are young families who are just uh, exasperated Separated by this. And they're reaching out to me, what do we do? I can't listen to another sermon like this. They're thinking, so what about all the history? Who cares? And so many have asked me, you know, what to do because they are just not getting uh, any kind of spiritual nourishment on Sunday mornings. There's no relevant connection to their lives. And you might think, well, they're just whining. And I got to tell you, if that's the attitude we have, if we think that that younger people are whining because they're not seeing the relevance of Scripture to their lives, it's not their problem. It's the way it's being packaged because every verse, every passage of Scripture tells us something either directly or indirectly about God and something either directly or indirectly about ourselves. And it's all relevant to the way we live in the 21st century. But what's going on seems completely irrelevant to a lot of people. The the questions that the younger generations of Americans have, they just simply aren't being answered. Their issues aren't being addressed. What are their issues? Recent research has shown that, that some of the backlash against the church has to do with three questions that younger generations have that the church seems to refuse to address. The first one is this, how do you reconcile faith and science? We're not going to unpack that, and I'm not going to answer that question, but these are the kinds of things that younger generations are concerned about. The second issue that's not being addressed for younger generations is the divinity of Jesus, the godness of Jesus. This is a really interesting truth. The younger generations are drawn to Jesus. They get his values. They, they appreciate his message of love and peace. They just don't understand how he could actually be God. And it's our job to help that make sense rather than just throw a Bible passage at them to show them why it would make sense for a, the God of the universe to reveal himself in human flesh. But we're not making those kinds of arguments. When we show up on Sunday mornings, we're just assuming that everybody believes that. And that is a false assumption because not everybody believes that. The third issue 
that uh, younger Americans are wrestling with when it comes to the Christian faith is this. They, they simply don't believe that their prayers are heard by God. And if you ask them why they believe that, they'll tell you, because I pray and nothing changes. Now, we probably have a, a hundred answers that we could just throw at them, but, but what we have to do is stop and listen and hear the heartache and then enter into that experience with them and share the truth. No, the message does not change. It doesn't change at all. But the method has to if we're going to have a hearing. Two reasons why your kids don't go to church. One of them is because they think it's completely irrelevant. Here's a second reason. Two reasons why your kids don't go to church. The first one is irrelevant. The second one is politics. Tell me you're sick of politics. Because I am. And, and I am just distraught by the way politics is doing a number on the church. Many people, both inside and outside of the church, are tired of the marriage of politics with the Christian faith. I've mentioned social scientist Ryan Burgess on uh, the Rugged Truth podcast before. He has uncovered sociological statistical data that suggests that many people go to church because they are Republicans rather than because they are Christians. In other words, what he's saying is people flock to church, conservative churches, because they think they'll be around people who share their political ideologies and not just their spiritual beliefs. And it appears that sharing their political ideologies with their congregations is more important to them than actually the basic tenets of the faith. Notice over the past three years how many churches have split over political issues pertaining to COVID, pandemics, you know, uh, shelter-in-place orders, all that kind of stuff. And the world is watching, younger generations of American Christians are watching, and they're saying, you know what? Enough. I've had enough of it. I've talked to people both outside the church uh, who aren't interested in Jesus. I've, I've talked to people outside the church who aren't interested in Jesus because they think that if they accept Jesus, they also have to accept a political party line. And that's ridiculous. I've talked to people within the church who are leaving it because they can't tolerate the way politics has hijacked their faith and radicalized the people in the pews next to them. Political division and Christian voices screaming about who is politically right and who is politically wrong has caused many people to leave the church and just become uninterested in Jesus. And that is tragic. And I bet you agree with me on that. Because, gosh, I can't believe I have to remind us of this, but this is all supposed to be about Jesus. And it eventually will all be about Jesus, regardless of your political affiliation. The Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 2, uh, that at some point in the future, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is Lord, not a political candidate, not a political party. It's got to be all about Jesus. So what can we do about that one? Well, we make it all about Jesus again. We can do that. We can do that. Let's, let's engage and, and listen and respond to overcome that issue of irrelevance. We'll engage, we'll listen, we'll respond. And be more empathetic and listening and not change the message, but be willing to alter the method so that we can actually gain a hearing for our Lord. That's what we'll do about irrelevance. When it comes to politics, let's make it all about Jesus again to overcome the political division. Let's make it all about Jesus again. Someone needs to make a hat <laughs> for that <laughs> with those letters, right? 
because it's just gotten way too far from him. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity you've given us to have a conversation about uh, this pointed issue. We are a church in crisis, and uh, man, I don't want to be the boy who cried wolf, but at the same time, too, I don't want to sit back and watch things fall apart when we can very easily change the way we do things and make a difference for you in our culture. Lord, I pray your blessing on those who have stuck with me and listened thus far. Ask your uh, grace and truth be always on our lips. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, listen, we're going to do something new starting with this episode of the Rugged Truth Podcast. I'm going to keep these videos a little bit shorter, but I'm going to have some added bonus material in the audio podcast. So if you're interested in that, go to your favorite uh, podcast platform, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, because I'm about to turn the camera off, but keep talking for a little bit to share a little bit of bonus information with uh, my Rugged Truth listeners. Um, invite everybody to, to be a part of that. Um, so audio listeners, if you're listening to this already on a uh, your favorite podcast platform. Uh, stick around for some bonus material after a short break. Uh, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor like I always do. Please like these videos, subscribe to our YouTube channels, our podcast channels, share this information with the people in your lives. They need it too. God bless you. We'll see you very soon. Music.